Hi, this is a video to show us laying on top coat with airless spray plasterer. Um, we've taped this this week. We sprayed this room yesterday, the first coat, and this is how we finish our top coat. Um, we find we require very little sanding when we use this method. Um, this is Ross Courier, my brother, and uh, yeah, he'll, he'll show you how we do it. So we're going to bring the ceiling line down the wall, and that'll be about a foot. Just trying to make sure he gets enough material into the corner. The corner is always where you're going to get a little bit less material sprayed um, as it's the edge of the fan. He's going to bring this line along. So he's going to be using a Rafina Superflex trail and he's bringing the pattern along the ceiling to make sure the tad on the plaster is always on the right hand side of his trail. If he gets any misses, he's going to use the material on the trail to quickly fill in the miss. And then he's also going to pull down a bit of the wall. So the product we're spraying is um, El Seco FX. It's our plaster of choice. And we taped using El Seco Fill. All the beads are Trimtex beads. And we've got the tear off beads on the uh, window reveals, which we'll do a separate video of how to coat up the reveals. Any excess, it's going to get on the trowel. We put onto the reveal and we we'll use that material to fill the actual uh, reveals up. It can sit there for a little while. So the idea is to spray on more material than you actually need. And we're not getting too far ahead of ourselves because the material will pull into the first coat and dry and then you'll end up with uh, misses in it. And misses are the thing that we're mostly trying to get rid of. We don't want misses because you can't really sand them out. If you're sanding out misses, then you're sanding off the top coat. So we've recently been training a few new guys. Um, and one of them said to us, he actually learns more by just sitting in a room and watching us than us actually trying to tell him exactly what we're doing and actually trying to plaster at the same time. So it gave me an idea of just uh, basically videoing Ross do a whole room. So, as you can see, the section Ross has done on the ceiling is pretty flat. We're not going to touch that any more than that. He's chased the towel by using the correct pattern on the ceiling. It's a pattern we learn to use as plasterers when we lay on material. Hopefully he's got very few misses in it. When he's spraying and trailing off, you can tell if there's too less, well, there's not enough material on the actual substrate because you're going to hear a scratching sound. And that's the actual grain in the plaster scratching across the surface where it's not thick enough. And when it's not thick enough, that's when you're going to be getting your misses. So if we're looking at the ceiling here, obviously the only towel you've now got 
It's just sitting there. So he's now going to join onto that. doing is we're spraying bands and the band's width is wide enough to be able to be smoothed in in one stroke of the trowel. So I'll pull down the walls. So he's chasing the tail. what he's got on his uh, spatula there, he's actually taken off a fair amount of material. Now he's going to use a forward stroke to go and blend into the first patch. He's chasing the towel by putting the pressure onto the back right hand side of his trowel, which comes naturally as long as you hold the trowel properly at the rear. trail sliding over the surface with not a lot of scratching. If he does hear scratching, you'll tend to know that there's probably a miss there somewhere. So you're not just using your eyes, you're using your ears to try and pick up any misses. Again, he's not trying to do it super quick. It's not about being the fastest blaster is in the world always. Because a few minutes longer when trailing off saves you a lot of time when you're sanding. And the process is quick enough anyway. To not be trying to go a million miles an hour. It's literally just spray and repeat the action all the way across the room. So he's going to pull that in. He's smooth that last little bit of towel. And then on the ceiling, 
It'll be a sweep over onto the onto the stuff we've literally just sprayed and flattened off. Now I know other people use blades and whatnot, but we prefer a trail. We just can't get this level of finish with a blade. We haven't got the control. Too many misses. Too much sanding required. So a room like this, I'd expect to take 25 minutes. Most of the work is in the ceiling. You're gonna have to forgive my camera. The gimbal has developed a fault and keeps wanna to spin to the left slightly. Makes it quite difficult to uh, obviously just stay focused in one area. See a little bit there, he's just picked out. So we've got a miss in the middle of the ceiling here. And you can see that, just what a slight colour variation. Let me get a close up. Let's see if we can get a picture of a miss, because no one ever, no one ever, uh, wait, 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 no one ever seems to. Uh, so that's a miss. And obviously, if you try to sand that out, you're sanding the top coat around it, and you don't want to be doing that. So what he's going to do now is have to come back over onto that again. So the sweep's always the same way. Where was it? <laughs> <laughs> just about there, you just want to get rid of the town, didn't you? Yeah. Never gonna be 100% perfect anyway, but So today we are using one of my machines that I've imported, uh, 110, looks very much like a Mark V, um, been using it for 18 months now, sprays as well if not better than a Mark V. This job, the three bed terraced house, um, which the client is totally refurbing. Um, they've ripped out every single wall, every single ceiling, why well, they've overboarded the ceiling, sorry. Um, new partitions to change the layout. We did have one wall which was Artex, which is the uh, stair wall. This has had two coats, 
Um, I didn't prime it, I didn't mesh it, um, all the Artex reacted and quite a lot of it fell off, so we've had to recoat it again, which was a bit of a bummer, but it's not the end of the world. Um, so this is two coats in, and I'm gonna have to knit back and put a third just on this wall. Um, upstairs, I sprayed yesterday with my dad. Um, the El Seco FX seems to dry pretty quick and um, we've got no heat in here and um, all the windows were shut because um, they won't open for some bizarre reason um, and this is how much it's dried out overnight and um, in the summer most of the time it's fully dry in the morning ready to sand obviously you can still see the bands on that but this is what one of our walls looks like before we sand it, which is very hard to focus on, but obviously there's just no imperfections really in it to, to sand. I mean, I'm gonna come down to the bottom here. Obviously around your plugs, you're gonna have a few bits and bobs. A small line there, it's at the bottom that's gonna sand out. using the snap off beads or the tear away beads and um, take a little bit of time to install but once once it's snapped off we're left with the plastic edge there and uh, obviously against the plastic window plastic against plastic with a little gap gives a bit of a uh, gives any frame seal a piece of plastic to grab both sides so it won't peel off like it does if you use cork um, once installed as well, we find it makes it really quick and easy to sand and really quick and easy to apply. So the wet corners still. We started this job this week. And um, Monday I came in. Um, I more or less taped, well I taped all of upstairs, all the upstairs, all the tapered edge joints. I did all the butt joints downstairs as well, and I taped all the corners upstairs. And Tuesday, my dad came in and he put all the beads up. And I was hoping he'd finish the corner tapes downstairs, but he didn't. But normally, that would be done. So two days taping, really. Third day, I came with my uncle, who I tr was training. Um, we didn't really get a lot more than one man's work done. Um, yesterday, me and my dad came, which was a full day. Um, I sprayed this room. That room, all the cupboards. My dad did the other two little rooms. Oh, and we finished all the taping downstairs and needed to be done ready for today. And know with the spraying, sorry, downstairs. That did. Ready for sanding. It's got a few more imperfections, but I think that won't sand out. Front windows will open, downstairs and back ones won't for some reason. That's basically it. I'll do a video of the walls, I'll do a video of us coating up uh, reveals. Um, I've got four houses that we're starting next week, which um, would show some of the taping. Any questions that anyone wants to uh, ask, please ask in the comments below.
I'm sure most people think this is a boring video. Got a miss there, I say. It shows up well good on camera. Still there. <laughs> cool. All right, so we we coated this ceiling this morning. Corners were twitched in with um. Oh, wait a second. Regina twitch. And it's best trail we found to do that. And. Fill up. Is our seco filler? We've used level line on the stairwell. Obviously, we've used. Seco FX. And all the walls. I think how many bags we use, Rosso? 300 and 300 and something meters here, isn't there? 300 and 300. About 300. Uh, probably about 25 bags. Yeah, uh, about 25 bags. Cool, so this is on the wall. It's going to be spraying the corners there. Pockets, not over them. So it's only going to be doing half of it. And if you notice, we went to the we went to the left corner first. Similar to when spraying a ceiling, we don't want to be getting spray plaster onto a finished surface when we come back around the room this way so if he finishes that corner first we can blend into what we've already finished and he'll do the same on this corner here so he's going to spray around the corner to the edge there Obviously, he's chasing that tail on that thing, on the on the plaster. He's sweeping up into what we've already finished down from the ceiling. He's putting, how much effort would you say you put on that? Just like training up normal plaster, Ross? Yeah, it's a fair bit of, a bit of pressure. Yeah, I mean, our trails definitely curve, so they, they do a, take a fair bit of pressure on them. He's going to do the top bit first. When he gets to the end, quite a bit of pressure to smooth that last little bit off. And down to the bottoms. And he's going to work up onto what he's just done again and get rid of the touch line that he created by starting halfway up the wall. And work up and into the original piece that he flattened. Been working with um, a taper Ian recently, showing him how we do things, and he said they're actually learning to follow the pattern correctly to be able to chase a tail and not keep touching the wall in the middle of what you've already flattened. It was one of the most important things he's learned with us. I keep meaning to draw, draw a diagram or something, but 
it's pretty easy when you uh, watch a video of a whole wall being done to kind of grasp the technique. Obviously, we work left to right because we're right-handed. If you're left-handed, work left to left to right. So we've got a little piece that he hasn't actually troweled off, which is spray still. So he's going to blend the spray back into that piece when he's spraying. So this wall is probably almost as big as the ceiling, but obviously takes a fraction of the time. spraying you're always going to find that your corners will have less material than the middle of your substrate or your wall especially up in these corners here these are where we're going to get misses if you don't trail up high enough we're going to end up not hit not not trailing this off and then it'll be a mission to sand If you notice, you turn the gun sideways to fill out the corner a bit more because the edge of the uh, spray fan is going to be spraying less material. So if you don't go into it like that, you end up with dryness and you end up with misses. And misses is what slows you down when you're sanding. We found you can't use any other trail except for a Superflex, Marshall Town, or anything like that. We've used Nella trails, which are similar, however, they haven't got the same width. I don't know if they've brought out any new versions. Um, we found the width to be too narrow, and we'd end up hitting the inside edge of a corner with our hands when we're trailing off the opposite direction. And the Rafinas were uh, a bit wider, so that stops happening. But we haven't bought any trails for quite some time so we've been happy with our Rafinas just don't drop them off scaffolds or towers because obviously they're damaged very easily so he's going to go around the socket Add a bit of extra material probably off the trail if he needs it. It's going to be dry around that socket because obviously he didn't spray straight over it. He sprayed around it. So there's a little mist next to that which he's picked up. We prefer the uh, Mel Seco FX over anything else because it's priced well. But it also, uh, it's just so super easy to use. It's not sticky. It's quite gritty when you sand it, which sounds like an, a bad thing, but actually when you're sanding it makes it easier. The sanders kind of stick to the wall and really um, sand off nice and easily. When paint's applied to it, the slight coarseness obviously gives it something to grip onto, a mechanical fixing. Um, if, you, if, it's super, if it's super smooth, then obviously there's nothing no mechanical fixing for the paint. It's all down to chemical, um, which is surely it's better to have a mechanical and a chemical fixing. It's not so rough that it doesn't look any different to any normal painted wall, but it's uh, it's just uh, it's just nice. It's just the right coarseness.
So this job's probably took I don't know how many days. One, two, three. Probably seven days. Probably take one, two, three, four, five. Probably take a couple of days to sand this house. Well, it will take a day for two of us to sand it. It won't be a late day though; it'll be a nice early finish. Um, which takes it up to nine days. Probably today we didn't need two of us here to finish this off, but I wanted to get some uh, video done, um, which you can't really video yourself, so that's a bit, a bit difficult to do properly. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll be nine days on this one, um, which will work out all right. Obviously, the house was a uh, dot and dabbed, so this mess is not ours. Missy Dabbers. So um, I asked on um, Facebook on the group Airless Spray Plasterers, which we uh, are admin of, um, if anyone had any questions, I'm just going to uh, jump onto that and read them, come back to try and answer some of them questions while Russ is still working and can uh, show us what we need to know if we need to uh, put it on video. All right. Right, so questions from the Facebook group, Airless Spray Plasterers, which is uh, free for anyone to join and should get loads of good free tips from there as well. Um, Paul Wilkins, how much of a trail do you give it? Um, Ross is trailing up like he would trail up multi-finish. Possibly not quite as hard. Not quite as hard. But you still, you are giving it edge to make sure you're filling in any, any areas. Um, also, you find sanding pretty boring. Um, I don't think anyone likes sanding. Um, that's why we've developed our what, method or whatever you want to call it to hopefully minimise that as much as possible. Put some headphones in, listen to some nice music. Yeah, headphones are good when sanding. Also, we like to split our uh, split our labour cost up into three sections, which is obviously taping, spraying, and sanding. 
and sanding's worth just as much as the other sections. So uh, you can earn decent money sanding if you wanted to, which obviously makes it a bit better. Um, your phone is horrible, Ross. It keeps shutting itself down straight away. Um, yeah, so hopefully not that much sanding. This base, we'll, we'll piss this in a day, two of us sanding this. I would like to think one of us could possibly do it in a day, but it'll be a bit of a mish. Um, but you're doing decent money doing that. What product are we using? Um, and that's from Mr. Barton. Um, we are using obviously our Seco FX. Um, we're spraying with a 535, um, and that's a Tri Tech tip, which we found produces a nice spray fan pattern for us. Um, it's really old, it's probably worn out. Doesn't really matter when you're spraying faster though. Um, well, how thick do we like the consistency? Um, with um, El Seco FX, um, we will not water it down. The only time I will ever water this product down is in the middle of summer when it's really warm, just to give us a little bit of extra time on the wall before it um, dries in. Um, obviously, the more moisture you add to the system, the longer it takes to dry. When going down the ceilings, do you come down the wall? Um, yep, we come down at least a foot, um, and then we don't get spray onto the ceiling once we're finished. And we do that, obviously, the same when we're doing the internals of the walls. You've seen the uh, technique when we're trailing up, so hopefully that's all your answers, all your questions answered. Um, Richard Formby, obviously, they're the same questions, so hopefully I've covered them for you. Um, how much do we apply for our second coat? Um, that's from Tom South. Hi, Tom. Um, normally... We like to think and we like to spray that we're about a third of the actual total covering. Um, most, of, most of the thickness, well, two thirds of the thickness is applied in the first coat. Um, and yeah, the top coat is just literally a third. Lost the questions now. What do you do to avoid bubbles? Bubbles, bubbles come in already mixed products, I find from the product being applied too thick. So with this plaster, our Seco FX, you can apply it quite thick before it will bubble. However, as soon as you see bubbles, you know you're putting it on too thick. Um, bubbles happen most in our skins as well. Yeah, and then I think, I think he means the little tiny pock bubbles. Yeah, I don't really, I don't actually really get them in um, over pre-existing paper okay. surfaces. Okay, okay. Yeah, so they So, we don't apply any protection to our windows. Um, I will possibly apply protection if they're really, really stupidly expensive windows, um, which would obviously then charge the customer enough money to cover for protection. When Ross has just sprayed, I don't know if you noticed, but he's obviously sprayed with the fan horizontal, and then he's switched it around to being vertical, and he's overloaded this area here before he's hit the edge of the bead to stop any overspray coming onto this window here. And he's done the same thing on that window, on that bead there as well. And obviously he stopped there because he's already done this corner and he's worked back from left, from right to left, to pull it in and he's gonna blend into that. Um, Steve Turner said what time. Um, I was doing stuff live through our group. Um, obviously the limitation with that is not everyone's always there watching it at that time they're not always available and free um, and it's kind of like a one time only thing um, I'm going to be doing a lot more stuff on YouTube I'm going to be breaking everything down individually so everyone can see all the techniques that we use properly I'm going to be showing you how to bead, what products we use to stick them on um, how to 
make sure your beads line up properly, everything. And it's all gonna be on the YouTube channel, which I'm hoping people will subscribe to so they can see these new bits and bobs that we put up. Um, it's not just gonna include airless. Obviously in our business, we do a lot of rendering as well. We do a lot of thin coat render systems, which we totally spray um, to a finish. So there should be some stuff on there for that as well. May create a separate channel for that, but I don't know. May create a separate channel for air to spray plastering on YouTube. But that's moving forward. Um, if you need any, if you've got any questions about machines, obviously the go-to machine is a Mark V. This is a Mark V clone. Um, I'll do some videos if you want about how to um, totally break the machine apart, how to change the packers inside the actual piston. Um, maintenance, obviously these are my machines. We use them day in, day out. They're not kept stupidly clean. This is our hoppers. Again, not stupidly clean. <laughs> Ross has just cleaned, for the first time ever, Ross has just cleaned the machine, so he won't shut up about it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, cool. That's basically all this video. Hopefully, if you've watched this and spent 41 minutes of your life looking at this, then you've took something away from it and it'll improve your uh, ways of working. I'm not saying we're always right. I'm always looking for people to show us new methods, give us tips. I'm sure we're not doing everything the best way possible. So if you've got anything that you want to say, please leave in the comments below. Um, yeah, we look forward to hearing from you. And um, please subscribe, subscribe.